It looks like uh, it, we might have had a little comment from Mr. Noah to, about this, in fact. Just recently? Just recently. This just, like just this is happening live? Whatever, if you're watching right now, he said... Oh, uh, he why, commented to us on yeah, Twitter? why didn't you invite him on to talk about it? Well, we had your video. Well, I'll have we you had, on to talk. I'll have Trevor Noah on we'll, to talk we'll about it. We'll have our people reach out to your people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Is this a public tweet or is this a message? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to find out. I think it's a message. All right. Well, yeah. Mr. Noah, you're more than welcome to. Of course. Uh, and, you know, we can exchange uh, contact information. And, um, you know, hopefully you can, uh, you know, I, I'm desperate for you to write for my next special. <laughs> <laughs> But I wouldn't want to do your material because no, I would no, be no, racist. No, 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 no. No, no, look, <laughs> let me be really clear. If we have Trevor Noah on, and uh, I know I wouldn't make it through the bookers, of course, there at Comedy Central. No. Um, of course, it will be respectful and cordial, and I respect anyone who, you know, reaches a degree of excellence in anything, um, even if it's, you know, through the assistance of a $55 billion company. No, but can we have him on? Is yeah. that for real? Yeah, absolutely have him because on. Because this, this, this is the kind of stuff that needs to happen if we ever want to find any common ground and save this yeah. country. I, oh, I don't intend to find common ground with someone who says he's racist. Someone who says Joe Rogan is racist. Oh, no, I'm not saying that you're going to find common ground, but, if, but can somebody who's actually owned by a giant company come on this show? Yeah. And actually talk to you. Look, this is the double standard. It shows you, again, the decency. They want to use your decency against you. Joe Rogan defended Trevor Noah in 2015 when Trevor Noah was accused of racism. This is what Rogan wrote. He wrote, too much for 140 characters, but nothing he said was out of line, and he's a funny dude. F the haters, Noah. That's what Joe Rogan said. Well, this is—black this is, uh, people can't be racist, though, Stephen. Right. So that that's, I mean, it's I don't think point. Trevor, I don't know that Trevor Noah is, I don't think he's racist. I, I think either. he's bought into a lot of racially charged narratives. I think that there's a racism that is a, a constant through line on the left that everything either needs to be seen through the lens of race or telling people that they cannot, they, they've, they've tried to gaslight you where it's like, oh, they want to tell you to just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yes. Yes. That's exactly it. Yeah. That is exactly correct. And I know that you're going to counter and say they're just saying that because they're delusional, because they're white. They don't realize that you can't do it when you're black. Well, you know what? Tell that to some kid with flipper grandkids from the hills of West Virginia. Okay? Yeah. Everyone has their thing. And yes, some people get some tough breaks. And yes, we've had tough breaks in this country uh, as it relates to race. The guy is from Africa, and he's on hosting The Daily Show. What's well, a fair point? You can do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Noah's attacks... Or at least what I would say is misrepresentations on Rogan. It has nothing to do with racist language. Now, here's another video that he uploaded uh, where he insinuates that the problem is because, and he's not just saying the problem in the sense of a, an objective uh, sort of observer saying, oh, the problem is now he's mainstream. And so there's, you know, people are now going through his stuff with a fine tooth comb. Watch the context. He's saying, you shouldn't be mainstream. You should be niche, which is ironic considering the audience size and the difference. But that's also they want to keep this facade alive that, yeah. my God, people actually tune in to watch Trevor Noah on, uh, on Comedy Central. Or, my God, people tune in to watch Brian Stelter. Or, my God, Brian Williams is an actual journalist. They need to keep that lie alive. And so now you have Trevor Noah using the what? This is basically the bully approach of, well, now that you're at the, you know, it's okay to be over there, but you can't come to the, the cool kids table. Watch. Because, like, what happened here was Joe Rogan was fringe, right? So he was, like, in his corner of the world doing his own thing, doing... Th does this make, like, I know this is, good, like, a weird concept, but, like, okay. Joe Rogan was fringe. He was in the corner of the world doing his own thing with his friends, by the way, saying whatever shit they wanted. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Then the podcast got bigger, got bigger, and it's still... Blah, 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 blah. Then Organically. The there. And even, like, when the it was huge, roots, yeah. it was still, like, fringe. Then Spotify came, and they were like, yo, we want to make you mainstream. If he stayed in his fringe lane, you find this would have... Because these videos have come up and gone and come up, but the people, most people didn't see it because it wasn't in no, the mainstream. that's not true. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the curse of mainstream. It doesn't matter if you're a musician, doesn't matter if you're a person, doesn't matter if you're a thing. It's like, be careful. You make your thing in a corner, and then when you come to the rest of society, be careful about what they think of your swinging dick, is what I'm saying. I hope, mm. I hope I've shed some light on this situation. Hey, That's the funniest thing, by the way, with Spotify. Is like, By the way, you know what a comedian should never be? Careful. <laughs> You know, Spotify bought Joe Rogan because he was huge and yeah. they were going to make money off of him. Well, they yeah. got an agree they didn't even buy Joe Rogan. They bought the rights. Right. So, uh, yeah. Nobody goes to... S no, but it is not 1920 where they're like, I'm going to make you a star, kid. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. All they knew well, was... Well, see, they tried it with Noah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Joe Rogan had one hell of a corner if he if he was off in a corner yeah. somewhere. We're no, going to make you a star. Corner. Just stay away from that apartheid in the pharma right. business. But we, sh <laughs> we sure think that the Americans will like you because you're ethnic, but not so ethnic that you intimidate white people. 
people. They let you date their daughter. Yes, this was all there. This was already as big as it is now. I would argue it may have even been bigger before it was on Spotify. Right. Well, that's true. But he, Trevor Noah actually just said something there that should shock, not shock everybody, but it should shock him. He just revealed the play. The play isn't that the content, the videos have come before and they've gone. They've come before and gone. No, 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 you're right. When he went to a woke company that people like governments want to put pressure on, yeah. then it became an issue. Right. Not the content, because the content has come and gone before. And by the way, I think a big reason saw it. I think a big reason that Joe Rogan went to Spotify is because he saw the way the tides were shift, turning on YouTube. And oh, he thought, you know what, okay, if I go here, at least I can say what I want. And that's what they said. That was contractually, deal, yeah. that was part of the deal. And now that's changed. So, okay, YouTube, maybe not. Okay, well, then Spotify. Okay, we can't do that. How about Facebook? No. How about Twitter? No. This is what's happening. Okay, well, at least let me let me create my own app, and I'll just, oh, no, wait, no. you're going to be banned from the app store. Can't do that. Well, uh, let me get my audio book on Amazon. Oh, no, that's going to be banned. We've seen this happen everywhere. You're talking about a consolidation of power with really five companies. Let's call it six to be generous. And all of them are doing the bidding of the United States government, and people like Trevor Noah cheering on. If you stayed in your fringe lane, Hey, how about, how, about not, how about you actually celebrate that a comedian came up organically? How about you celebrate? This is the thing. I remember watching Joe Rogan. <clears throat> okay, I remember watching Joe Rogan back when he was on his webcam a long time ago. Yeah. Long time ago. I was in Montreal and I was watching it and he was lucky to get, you know, you're talking about a few thousand viewers at this point. It was mainly on his website. Remember, if anyone forgets about this, Nick Diaz, hey, train by day, Joe Rogan by night, all night, every day. This is something that happened a long time ago. It was part yeah. of his intro. I've been following him for a long time. I remember, it was just him and a webcam and one thing that he would always say, and I would echo this, it was inspiring to me when I was coming up. He said, the beauty of the internet is that there's no gatekeeper. Anyone can do it. He, he, and he changed when he was on Tom Green's show that was in his basement at one point. He said, this is great. You're doing it on your own. And this is Joe. By the way, Joe Rogan was hosting one of the most popular shows in the country at this point. He had been on uh, a news radio. He was hosting Fear Factor. And he had a contract with the UFC. And he decided to go out and take a risk. And he was saying, this, I want other people to do this because he yeah. was tired of dealing with executives. Also, he did, he did work with the UFC for no money. Early and a lot of people don't know that either. This was a budding. This is a man who takes risks and who actually puts his money where his mouth is. He just said, "I'm a fan. I'll go and do it." And I think at a certain point he said, "Well, it just cost me too much money to travel and go out and do that." He was doing it as a fan, and now, of course, he's wealthy, working with the UFC as he should be. He started it with a webcam, and he talked about how there are no more gatekeepers. So here's this is the contrast. Joe Rogan, throughout the entirety of his career, if you want to go through and pull some racist stuff, fine. But go look at his early content, and you will see a constant him saying, hey, we don't know what's going to happen. We're just trying to make this work because I don't have to deal with executives telling me what I can and cannot say. On the flip side, the people who want to get rid of him, the Neil Youngs who work with BlackRock, the Trevor Noahs saying you should stay fringe. Really? Tra Let me ask you this, Trevor Noah, and maybe I'll be able to ask you this when you're on the show. Do you want a world where comedians have to live in your world of the Viacoms? Of, let's go through the companies. What is it? Uh, ABC Disney, mm -hmm. NBC Universal, uh, Viacom. I don't know. There's a Viacom Turner. There's sure. Turner Viacom. There's about five or six companies. Trevor, no, is that the world you want? Do you feel more free than Joe Rogan? Do you want comedians to look to your situation and say, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to do that, where I have to be at home for two years because of the policy of COVID, and I'm not even free to go in front of a live audience, which he still isn't right now? Or do you think that you, do you want younger comedians to at least look to Joe Rogan and say, oh, great, I can do it, and I don't have to be beholden to someone else dangling a check? Do you really believe that the Moonveses, that the Weinsteins of the world, that the Zuckers, that the Roger Ailes of the world, I had to deal with that. Do you really believe that they have the best interests at heart of entertainers, of performers, of people who should be free to speak their minds and their opinions? Do you believe that's a better world for people like you and people like Joe Rogan? Because you are a quizzling for them, whether you mean to or not. And I don't say this with a hint of hatred. I say it with tremendous sadness because this beast is gonna swallow you whole too, man. It absolutely will. And by the way, ironically, when he says this is fringe, well, you know what? I don't know if he believes it. Just like when Brian Stelter was bitching that people were trust, that it's a problem. Yeah. They're trusting Joe Rogan more than CNN. <laughs> well, stop sucking at your job, CNN. 
For starters, <laughs> I, I believe for Stelter it was fridge. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> well, he wasn't concerned about them locking up toothpaste. No. <laughs> he was just concerned about them locking up lard paste. He's like, well, they're locking up my beef tallow. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so Trevor Noah's most popular video, 18 million views with the assistance of Viacom. Joe Rogan, 51 million views. I don't know if we have the screen grab that I asked you it's guys also to bring up. Tommy Loren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's with Tommy oh, Loren. Yeah. Okay, yeah. If we have the screen grab of his recent videos, you know, he has how many million? Nine million subscribers. He's lucky to crack the only videos that are immensely popular are the ones that are addressing Joe Rogan. And we're talking about short clips produced by oh, Viacom. Don't be, Joe Rogan, uh, I'm so, uh, sorry. Joe, Joe Lewis. <laughs> Joe Lewis, I'm sorry. Joe Lewis, like, I don't I'm know. talking about wow. cli short clips that have the full promotional gummy, gummy. authority of, uh, of, he'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. That have the full promotional authority of a $55 billion company. And it gets less than, not to toot my own horn, than the hour and a half show that we do every day. Yeah. Not to mention the short clips. And you want to say it's fringe. It's gaslighting. It really is. It's, it's fringe. And then a lot of people are going, and how many? At least 11 million people are going, uh, no, it's not. But there's 300,000 people at CNN going, yeah, those 11 million, they're fringe. Insane. They want to change. They want to maintain a death grip on the political landscape, the media landscape. And they want to make you think that they are not. And they want to make you think that you are in some fringe minority and you are not. Just like Dave Chappelle is not. We have a segment here on Dave Chappelle, but you know what? I guess we'll probably have to do it on Mug Club. Listen, please. And if you want to have Trevor Noah on the show, uh, you think it would be a good conversation, do me a favor. Smash that like button. Do it. I think it really right would now. be a good conversation. I would, I would absolutely like to have him. I'd like to have him in person, though, because with Skype and everything, it's all yeah, like a problem. Yeah, no, like a real conversation. Like something needs to Yes. Stuff just needs to happen. Watch Louder with Crowder live, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.